Breast cancer is not one single disease, but actually ten distinct types of tumour, dependent upon a woman's genetic makeup. That is the finding of the largest ever study of breast cancer tissue and could provide more targeted treatment. Our science editor, Tom Clark, is here to tell us more. Tom, it sounds dramatic. Ten different diseases, effectively. This study is, is one of the most sort of powerful in, in recent years to illustrate the what new genetic technologies are allowing scientists to do in sort of redefining how they understand disease. And it's a big step towards this idea of tailoring disease treatment to the individual, this idea of personalised medicine, in this case, for breast cancer. Nowadays, today, at diagnosis, how serious a breast tumour is, is largely judged based on how well uh, tests, how, how it responds to tests for the two particular breast cancer drugs that are available to treat the disease. And this study sort of turns all that on its head. It looks at 2,000 tumours from women in the UK and in Canada. It's the largest study of its kind. And what it found, by looking at thousands of genetic mutations within those tumours, is that, yes, breast cancer isn't one disease, but it falls into ten very discrete genetic groups. And which genetic family the breast cancer belongs to has a strong bearing on how serious that tumour might be and how well it responds to treatment. For example, one class that they've, they've identified, which, according to current tests, would be grouped as, you know, quite difficult to treat, in fact, only has about a 10% mortality rate after 10 years, not such a severe type of cancer. Conversely, another group uh, that they've identified, which would have a sort of fairly positive treatment profile based on current tests, would if, in fact has a 60% mortality after 10 years, a really nasty type of tumour. More interestingly, um, another new class that seems to belong to these very lucky group of women whose immune system gets involved and sort of fights their, their cancer for them, of particular interest to scientists. And as the report's author told us um, earlier, this should ensure in future that women get the right treatment for their disease. If it's 10 diseases, it means that they'll require different diagnostic procedures, they will be associated with different clinical outcomes, and they will require different treatments. And so it's a big step forward in terms of how we manage women with breast cancer and how we, we need to not think of it as one or two or three diseases, but a much more complex entity that will require, therefore, more tailored treatment. More tailored? So less mastectomy, more mastectomy, less tamoxifen? I mean, how is it going to look? dictate how a doctor, the, the, the tools the doctor has in his armory to treat cancer, but it will prevent, for example, it will help identify those women who've got a particularly nasty type of tumour and make sure they get the right kind of treatment early on, possibly the more radical types of treatment. But it could also, on the other hand, and just as importantly, spare some women very toxic, very expensive chemotherapy that their tumour might not necessarily need. Um, I should point out that they've identified these 10 groups. It doesn't mean these tests will be available tomorrow. They've got to do clinical trials to prove that what they've seen in this study translates into the hospital environment. But Cancer Research UK, which funded the work, and now immediately they're going to start funding trials to look into this. So there's the chance that women who are newly diagnosed with, with breast cancer will be able to enrol in those studies. I'll just mention one more thing. Looking at all these, you, you, you asked about new tools in the armory. Um, women, uh, by looking at so many genes in this study, they've identified some quite promising new targets for those... Uh, for, for, for companies to look at to develop new medicines for treating breast cancer. Tom Clark. Now, a quick summary of tonight's news at 7.29. Uh, a Libyan military commander is taking legal action against Jack Straw following allegations the former Foreign Secretary personally permitted his legal, illegal rendition. Lawyers representing Abdul Hakim Belhaj confirmed legal papers had been served on the MP. Unemployment in Britain has fallen for the first time in almost a year. The jobless total fell by 35,000 in the quarter to February to 2.65 million. The government says the figures were a step in the right direction. And as Breivik, who killed 77 people in a bomb and shooting attack in Norway, told the court that the death penalty or a full acquittal were the only logical outcomes for his massacre. And Home Secretary Theresa May has dismissed terror suspect Abu Qadada's latest bid to avoid deportation as a delaying tactic. His lawyers lodged an appeal with Europe's human rights judges, effectively blocking the government's attempts to deport him to Jordan. And still to come tonight... What?
In a moment, cameras are allowed in court for the first time to record the sentencing in a murder trial. Is this the start of a revolution in how we view justice? And at 7.38, inspire a generation. The Olympic motto is unveiled as the 100-day countdown begins.